if you want to think about optimal, about an optimal uh, payroll tax, where um, you think about, you know, you want a payroll tax to be able to reach um, the efficient labor market tightness. Well, you know, we can do exactly the same and we could compute it exactly in the same way that we computed the um, efficient, the optimal minimum wage. Okay, um, and we could do that. And in fact, you know, it's, it's pretty simple to do it. So let me just just highlight the steps. Uh, you know, they are the same step as the one that I used to compute the optimal minimum wage. So we can compute an optimal payroll tax. I can call it T star. And uh, basically, what I know is that it's going to be the payroll tax, so that. When I'm at my efficient labor market tightness, my goal is again to maximize welfare, so I have to reach my tightness theta star, the efficient tightness theta star. Uh, and so the payroll tax T star is such that the labor demand at theta star. Uh, is just at the, you know, is able to give us the employment level uh, and star. So we know that uh, we have efficiency, we have a tightness theta star, we have an employment level and star which is given by the labor supply at theta star, and you know, we have also an efficient level of unemployment u star which is just h minus l star. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and so the op optimal payroll tax is such that the optimal payroll tax is such that in equilibrium uh, we have uh, the, the efficient labor market tightness theta star prevail. Uh, basically, this optimal payroll tax allows us to reach the tightness theta star in an equilibrium. So it's such that the labor demand at theta star is actually equal to labor supply at theta star, so that which would make theta star an equilibrium. Okay, but the labor supply at theta star, we know, uh, it's you know it's this L star. Uh, Okay, so basically to find, uh, and we know what theta star is, that's something that's given by our analysis of the of, of efficiency in the labor market. So basically we need, what we have to solve is that the labor demand of theta star is equal to L star, and then if I use my, uh, if I use the expression for the labor demand, I need to have A alpha, Over one minus alpha, this is equal to L star, and here I have one plus tau star W, one plus tau star alpha. So that's what I have to solve. And then if I manipulate everything the way I did before, uh, I'm going to get, I'm going to flip everything around and get one plus T star W, one plus tau theta star alpha divided by a a alpha that has to be equal to so let me um, that's going to be equal to l star alpha minus one okay so uh, following the same logic and then if I wish up on everything I get my expression for the optimal payroll tax, one plus T star has to be equal to A alpha L star alpha minus one divided by one plus tau one plus tau theta star alpha W and that's my uh, that's going to be 
my optimal that's the optimal uh, payroll tax t star okay uh, and in fact you know this payroll tax may be positive it could also be negative you'll have a payroll subsidy where um, you just give firms money when they hire people you know which is something we've seen actually in some labor market uh, It could be positive or negative. Uh, okay. Um, so, so yeah, so that's what it is. Uh, there are also empirical questions. So in the same way that we've seen there are empirical questions about the effect of the minimum wage, whether minimum wage depresses employment as in our model or, or actually not. There are also questions about the effectiveness of, of payroll taxes, about the effect of payroll taxes on... Uh, on wages, um, these are kind of effects related to incidence of taxes. So these are uh, slightly complicated effects. Um, but uh, right, but if at least if if the model behaves as we've seen here, so where all the incidence of taxes, so who pays taxes is on firms. Okay, so here that's what we assume. We assume that firms pay all of the taxes. Uh, so that means that the incidence of taxes on firms and uh, actually the payroll tax would be quite effective to influence labor market outcome. If incidence of taxes on workers, which means that effectively workers pay the tax, then your payroll tax will be completely ineffective, actually. Think about it. If payroll tax is completely paid by workers, either by law or in practice, you know, through incidence, uh, through incidence effects, then firms are completely, firms don't care about the payroll tax if it's paid by workers. Uh, firms always pay the same wage in practice, and then workers have to carry the burden of the payroll tax, then your payroll tax will be completely ineffective. So to be able to answer the question as to you know whether the payroll tax would be a good instrument or not to achieve efficiency, uh, basically we need to figure out what is the incidence of uh, the payroll tax. Okay. Uh, so the key thing to remember is that. If payroll tax paid by firms, like we've assumed here, so the technical world is that the incidence of tax is on firms, then you know, then the payroll tax can be an effective tool. But if uh, the payroll tax is, is paid by worker, so again, basically the incidence of the tax is on workers, so that then what happens, which is not what we've assumed here, because if the incidence of the tax is on workers, then firms and labor demand are unaffected by the tax and that means that the tax is completely ineffective. Okay, and um, the question of incidence is, is not resolved uh, empirically. Uh, you know, there are some people arguing that incidence on firms, some people that incidence on workers. So again, like the minimum wage, to be able to have a, an accurate uh, policy prescription, we need to know more about that. So now it becomes, now that we have kind of a model to think about it, it becomes an empirical, uh, an empirical question.